hey everybody we had a wild weekend <laughs> yeah what's up um so we thought we would start the podcast by talking about what we were up to this weekend and you may be thinking a wild weekend what does that entail for you guys how did it how did it start out Aaron? well the weekend starts on friday yes laundry day oh laundry day that was yesterday mm-hmm. i decided to wash my clothes by hand mm-hmm. why because when I wash them using the laundry machines, tiny stains pop up on each one, on each yes. piece of my clothing. Little tiny, I don't know what kind of stains they are. Little gray ones. They kind of look like grease stains. Yeah. But they're on everything you own. Yeah. So you decided to wash your clothes. I said I'm going to take it hand. into my own hands. So I was sitting, kneeling on my bathroom floor, <laughs> washing them with a mixture of a tote bin and the bathtub yes. while uh, watching Citizen Kane. Mm-hmm. And I was just washing them. And I thought it would feel kind of like a spiritual, like, oh, look, I'm going back to our roots um, <laughs> before all this technology yes. kind of thing. But it just, um, I mean, I guess it was like that. I guess it was. Okay. It's yeah. just. The drying process is hard. When the dr- well, they're still drying. Yes. Um, I, I say they're drying. They, they might be getting wetter. I don't know. They're just <laughs> kind of all hanging in my room. None of them are really any drier at this point. So I don't know how long it will take. So yeah, we'll keep you updated next week. See if Aaron's clothes are dry. Yeah, in, <laughs> I always <laughs> hope so because I have nothing to wear for the week. Yes. Um, so that was fun. Saturday is also the day we don't eat meat. Oh yeah, meat was Saturday. So we started the day off. I don't know. I think I had cereal or something so regular. So we really saved our emissions by having nachos. Yes, because we, we got to the end of the day and it was really we were really hungry. And Aaron wanted a hearty meal. So I we just did. wanted some nachos. All right, so I made nachos <laughs> with like beans and onions and peppers and things on them. Beaucoup de fromage. Yes, and this is probably the first time we've had a lot of cheese in like a year. And I got cheese belly. Yeah. Big time. And that led us to a conversation today on our way to the gym about the cheese conspiracy. The global cheese conspiracy. Yes. And if you haven't heard it, it's basically that governments around the world, or especially around the Western world, are mm. promoting cheese products... Or dairy, dairy products. products, as well as eggs. Yes. Big Farm is what it's called. Mm-hmm. In an attempt to control the population. Yes. Through what, the hormones in the products? I don't know. I feel like it's just kind of another thing contributing to poor health to kind of keep people down. Maybe. Really? Because we were discussing, like, what else does the government distribute or, like, advertise? It, does, it just seems weird to us that that's, like, the only big food. It, there's never, like, advertisements for... In Canada, anyway, you never see for any like apples for apples. It's always yeah. just dairy products and eggs. Yeah. And it makes me wonder. It raises a few eyebrows. Cues, yeah. Eyebrow questions. Yes. You were saying the only other products they tend to advertise and sell are drugs. Drugs. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that's another thing we were. This is my this on weekend. top of my recent um, theory that I might be addicted to meat. Yeah. But that's we'll save that for another episode <laughs> when we get into that one. Yes. So we decided for some reason on our day that we were trying to cut our emissions to have cheese, which we don't normally do. Yeah. Which we probably won't be doing ever again because it makes both of us have what we call cheese belly when you're just really... Lethargic. Yeah, lethargic. It makes me feel like Snorlax the Pokemon. Yes. Um, anyway, and that brings us to today. It's Sunday, Sunday. The, the peak of craziness. Peak of craziness. Went to the supermarket I got a dragon fruit. I was just feeling crazy. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> Picked we up ate one of these it. spiky looking fruits, yeah. went home, sliced it. It looked so gray inside, and then I just ate the whole thing. I <laughs> don't know. I'm just yeah. a mad lad. It I can't was be a controlled. Wild weekend. I like trying new fruits. Um, any other highlights from the week? We went to see 1917. That was great. Oh, 1917 was awesome. Yes. We'll probably give a full review during our Oscar episode episode which is about two weeks from now yes but 1917 was great we went to see that it was a wonderful week last sunday we went to this new restaurant it was just a great week all around oh we also um i also gave you a bit of an injury today (laughs) yes when i was spinning you on a stool (laughs) so we got back from the gym we're eating lunch and then just getting ready to record and aaron has these like bar stools that spin and like was sitting on them he's like how fast can you spin and so i spun myself then he's like, let me spin you. And in their living room, which is very small, 
he was spinning me around. I'm like, Aaron, don't do that. Like, I'm going to break something, break the TV. The stool is going to come undone. None of those and things I said, happened. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it unscrews. Yeah. And so you were spinning me really, really fast and then tried to change direction and it threw me. I was I said, so dizzy. I switch direction and then it just, just fell off. It just went flying and my back is very scraped up from that incident. But it made me think, I was thinking the other day, like, why don't we get injured anymore? We get injured a time when we're kids, but it's because we don't have fun. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah. So I was, I was, I'm not too mad about it. I'm just trying to return us to a childlike state. Yeah. So that was our week. Very fun. And, and here we are. And here we are. Today's episode, I've been looking forward to it a lot. It's about the wonders of the world. Yeah. So what kind of made us come to this decision to have an episode about the wonders of the world? It's not environmental. You're right. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. No, we should. We should. Because it's cultural. It's cultural. It's social. Yes. It's geographic. It's technology. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's landmarks. There we go. So that and it, especially fits in. it's wonder. Yes. And which wonders of the world are we doing since there are so many lists? The ancient wonders of the world. The original list, which was written... Around the first century. Around the first century, refined when um, during the, I guess you call it the Hellenistic period. Yes. When there was a lot of travel and various uh, conquering and uh, mm-hmm. conflicts usually around the Mediterranean world, so that's where all the seven wonders on this list are. Yeah, so all these seven wonders are mentioned in a poem that was written in the 2nd century BC. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. So that's with an A. Yeah. So he wrote this poem, and it had all of these, it listed all seven, and then it was kind of like the last one, which yeah. you thought was the greatest. But there were many lists before this. Yeah. Um, Her- Her- started... Heraclitus, another Greek yeah. guy, was writing about them. Um, I think that's who I was talking about. I it's, it started during all the traveling, but since, spoiler, one of them was built um, pretty late into the period of list making. Mm-hmm. That was kind of an addition, so there were various different lists, but this is like the agreed upon seven, yeah. usually. And obviously, since then, there have been a bunch of other lists, a bunch yeah. of people saying, well, this is the eighth wonder, no, this is the eighth wonder, and then there's yeah. the seven modern wonders, and the seven natural wonders, and the seven... The seven... Um... Technological wonders. What am I thinking of? Like the Middle Ages. What? Yeah. That's not what they're called, though. I think, it, ancient, I think it was. Hey, the Middle Ages. Yeah, I mean... Those are what I always think of when I think of the Seven the, Wonders. The Stonehenge, Great Wall of China. Yeah. That, um, um, the Colosseum, things like this. Yeah, um, so these are all before those. The ones we're talking about are way before those, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about today. But why? Because we were discussing, and it's like, why were these the wonders? Like, they were pretty much all temples or stone buildings and they're incredible to think of and how people even manage to build them is kind of like what i think of course why i think they're wonderful it's like you'd see them like the pyramids yeah and you'd be like this doesn't make any sense how is this built mm-hmm. you go home tell your friends be like you don't want, like you should you need to see this yeah it's a it's a list and they are landmarks from when the world was smaller and more um, yeah they're more pretty mysterious. much all just around the mediterranean sea yeah and i like that but yeah. we're not being uh Eurocentric or whatever, we're not ignoring that there are wonders all over the place. Yeah. Um, it's just that for this, we also uh, we wanted to do a list which was defined and agreed upon, whereas the modern yeah. ones is like they're all from various different publications or they're online polls or they're yeah, like just from completely different depends years. on where you were raised. I think I don't like that kind of thing. So yeah, we're just going with these agreed upon seven. We're just gonna talk about them, mm-hmm. discuss, explain. Yeah. I thought it was really cool that so early on there was like tourism. I work in the tourism industry in the summer, and I was like, that's really cool. It's not like tourism like we know it now, but it was like people started just going places just to see them. Of course. And for so, I didn't think for so long that people would be oops, going places to see buildings. I, people, I imagine people used to travel to go like experience different climates and cultures, but it's crazy to see that for so long people have been going just to see like these man-made structures. Are we saying them in any order, or are we just saying them randomly? Just saying them randomly. Okay. This one probably should be last, even, but I'm going to say it first. So there's the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which, based on the records, the poems and things that were written about the wonders, these were these gardens that were built, like levels of gardens built, and they kind of look like they're flowing into one another. Mm -hmm. And it was built in the town of Babylon, really close to the Tower of Babel, which is now modern-day Iraq. Yep. And they were built by Nebuchadnezzar II. This is what the theories are, because this is the one wonder 
which we don't even know if it really existed. Yeah. Because there's no real records of it, but there's some, there's records of a very similar garden in Nineveh, which is a tiered garden said to have been built for like the king's wife. Okay. But that's in a completely different location than this is. But anyway, it's a wonder. We don't know if it's even real. And what do you think about it? I think it's neat that there's something on the list that we don't know if it's real. Because yep. that couldn't happen nowadays. True. If someone went on like a trip and they were like, these are the seven wonders that I saw in my voyage across the Mediterranean. then it, And one of them was just a complete lie. <laughs> like, yeah, we just say, where are the pictures? Yeah. I didn't see that pictures? on your Instagram. No. So it's kind of that's kind of funny to me. And like it very well could have been just made up to like round off the seven. People say it's like kind of an addition to say like it's a representation of like the Garden of Eden. Oh. Yeah. So that's about the same place as well. Yeah. Um, what do you, do you think it was real or not? I imagine there was something similar to it built. Right. But Tiered they... Gardens is like, it's a crazy innovation, uh, probably a crazy feat of... Engineering. Engineering, yes. But, so like, it, maybe it wouldn't exist, but I feel like things like that were happening and we still have no explanation for why they were happening, how they were happening. So I wouldn't be surprised if it really existed and it was a garden, so it could have de- um, decomposed quicker right. than... I kind of like the idea of it just being a fictional one. Yeah. Because the rest of the other six kind of all are so awe-inspiring as they th- that they could be fictional. Mm-hmm. And I really like fiction. And I like that this was a world which was characterized still by mystery. Yeah. Um, and exaggeration, obviously, and hyperbole. Mm-hmm. So I like the idea that there were seven, and then maybe this came out of a regular size or slightly above average um tiered garden as you were saying mm-hmm. another one existed but it just um became mythologized into something so huge and massive so that modern day renderings of it as we were seeing earlier today yeah are just incredible yeah gorgeous is like gold statues throughout and just mm-hmm. waterfalls it was looks like an actual paradise yeah yeah like the stories where that nebuchadnezzar built it because his wife was from somewhere that had like hills and mountains oh. so it was that she could like feel at home with this man-made mountain <laughs> which is really cool what I a think. nice story yeah so Aaron, what's the next um, wonder unless you have anything else to say about the hanging gardens maybe we'll talk more about it later yeah the next one is the colossus of Rhodes. um did you know about this one before we started researching i didn't episodes? no the only of the seven which i could have named were the Hanging Gardens and the Pyramids. Because mm-hmm. I knew, like you asked And me. I knew there was a big statue involved. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, and this is because the blurring of so many other lists, so many yeah. other, like, every newspaper has their own Wonders of the World list. It's like, how yeah. do I keep track with all this? I knew the Middle Aged Wonders, but those were all, and I didn't even know their names, I just knew what they looked like. Hmm. If I had a pile of pictures, I could have picked them out. <laughs> anyway, so the Colossus of Rhodes, I picked this one because I'm really interested in huge statues i think they're really cool yeah it was a statue of the greek sun god helios and it was in the city of rhodes which was on the greek island of rhodes okay and it was kind of perched on the entryway where uh, ships came in i guess with yep. one feet on each dock kind of so feet mm-hmm. would go underneath it um it was built around 280 bc and it was said to have stood around about 33 meters Unlike oh, wow. the Hanging Gardens, they actually have some specifications about this one. Yeah. Um, which apparently is about the height of the Statue of Liberty. That's crazy. Just and it was reference. straddling like the entryway to the yeah. uh, the canal or whatever. Yeah, the canal. That's right. Yeah, I liked this one because it was the, um, the shortest lived wonder of the world. It was only around for about 60 years. It collapsed uh, because of earthquakes in around 226 BC. Okay. Which I guess makes sense because of where it was. Yeah. Right, and, right on the water, basically. Yeah, so it wouldn't be very stable. And it's funny you say it's like... On this, an island. Yeah, <laughs> straddling like the entryway to the canal. But the accounts say that, but in reality, there's no way that I could have really structurally done that. So it was probably actually built to one side or the other. Hmm. But it's cool, again, that they kind of mythologized it and said... I don't know if that's the right word. Just go with it. <laughs> they made it sound like it was like this crazy thing that was like standing on both sides of the harbor which is pretty cool why do you say it's interesting because it lived so short a life um i just like that contrast with this and the pyramids which are still stra- still standing mm-hmm. despite them being 
the oldest one. Yeah. Like um, this, the Colossus of Rhodes was the newest one, and still it, or one of the newest ones, and still it collapsed so soon. Mm-hmm. It was built to celebrate Rhodes's victory over Cyprus. Okay. So I guess Helios must have been maybe one of their patron gods or something like that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I just think big statues are very awe-inspiring. Especially when they're built to represent some kind of mystic hero. Some kind of deity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess the modern... I I like that comparison with the Statue of Liberty because that is representing an an ideal as well. Mm -hmm. It's not about victory, really. It's about freedom and liberty, but still. So the next wonder that I have is the Temple of Artemis. It was built for the goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the sun, I yeah, believe. The, not the sun. Not the sun, just the <laughs> yeah, hunt the, and the moon. Yeah, the Greek goddess Artemis. Okay, cool. So she, this temple was built. It was built three times. Originally, it was so long ago that no one like knows who built it. It was attributed to the Amazonians. Really? Or the Amazons, yeah. Why would they build a temple to it. Artemis? This is That's why I thought she, it was the goddess of war. Um, it, they're like a tribe of female warriors. Right. And so they thought they got together and they built this temple. But did they worship Greek gods? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> but that's that's what that's what they thought. They thought, oh, the Amazons must have built this temple. Oh, you mean modern archaeologists? Yeah. Okay. Something like that. And then it collapsed due to like earthquake or a flood or something. It was built again. And then it was built a third time. Every time it was built, it was built bigger. And it's like third rendition is when... It was discovered as one of the wonders of the world. Um, I thought it was neat because... So it was built three times, and then the third time it was eventually destroyed because when the Romans took over, they wanted all of the old temples to be destroyed. And so it was not destroyed, but it was closed down because it was built to worship a pagan god, in their opinion. And so it was shut down, and then... We don't actually know when exactly it completely got destroyed, but that's why it was broken down. And there's a few mentions of it in Christian history of people going to the Temple of Artemis for like, I think it was Paul or something, went there and he, there's an account of him going and he was like praying for it to be like cleaned of the old spirits and Mm -hmm. to be like renewed as a temple to be used for Christian worship. Which I thought was interesting. It is. Yeah. And there's actually, when, because there's not very much left there, a lot of the pieces of the temple were used either to build nearby castles, and a lot of the statues that were there can be found throughout, um, like, the Roman Empire. Wow. Or it could be. Yeah. People, they, like, stole them. And we're like, oh, we'll use this gold statue for our own. Yeah, a lot of pilfering. Yeah. Big sites like this in the ancient world. That happened a lot with the pyramids as well. Too oh, yeah. Raiding, Didn't people raiding. like steal all of that was covered in limestone? Like just every piece of it was taken. Of what? The temp of uh, the pyramids. Didn't they steal what? Weren't they like covered in limestone or something? Made them really shiny, but then yes. like it was all stolen. I don't think that was stolen. I think that was just eroded. Oh, okay. It was the tombs were raided. A lot of the oh, interiors yeah. stuff was stolen. Oh, okay. But possibly the plating might have been taken. I don't know. Yeah, I know some of it was eroded, but I feel like people stole it as well. People always ruining everything. Yeah. Um, Did you have anything else you wanted to say about the Temple of Artemis? It sounds very interesting. Yeah, it was the only one that was, like, built, or one of these things. Not only one, but, like, one of the only female, or, like, goddesses, which I thought was interesting. I always find it cool that, like, gods and goddesses were, like, equal. Yeah, I mean, we're going to learn with the next one, maybe, that there was still, in Greek, the Most High was still a man. Well, yeah, Which was Zeus. Um, But, yeah, there were... Of course, it was worthy to um, to worship both the male and female uh, divine entities. Yeah. It's the most explicitly, like, it's the only temple on this list. Yeah. Which is interesting, considering through history, places of worship have usually been what have, um, hmm. what have prompted the great architecture. Yeah. But a lot of these, they're not explicitly temples, but they are. No, of course. They're, yeah, they're religious. Yeah. The next one is pronounced the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, um, which is a tomb built around 350 BC in what would now be Turkey. Okay. And it was for a man called Mausolus, and that's where we get the name mausoleum from. 
okay. of the wide mausoleum and he was a kind of governor slash king type thing in the persian empire at the time okay this one was destroyed by earthquakes again between the 12th to 15th century so okay. it was i think it was the the most recent one to be destroyed I think this one's super impressive. It's it was kind of if you look at images, it was a very um, robust, kind of stately looking uh, building, very square at the bottom, just like a solid uh, square foundation with statues around it. Okay. And then it had those kind of, um, and then the top was all columns, as a lot of buildings were at the time, or big buildings, mm -hmm. uh, with a really impressive roof as well. Yeah, it was a tomb built for him, just as the pyramid was. We'll get to later mm -hmm. so tomb building was a big thing yeah those were like probably some of the most extravagant structures up until a certain point because that's where the most powerful people would put a lot of their resources yeah saying, while they were alive yeah it was building a, a, a monument to their life yes because you mentioned earlier when we were t chatting about like how a lot of the modern architecture was like kind of a flex or like a a flex yeah what's the proper word for that a oh yeah it's a flex or i think as i said built as um altars to the human to human pride yes that's but you it. know facts it's the same same thing <laughs> altars to the human pride <laughs> that's what it's that's what it seems like no yeah, but i feel I like mean, that's what tombs are like as well Well, yeah of course it's not a modern thing that was always the case yeah. it was always every town is um is building statues or today skyscrapers and let's see who can build the biggest one yeah and that's what the story in the bible is about the tower of babel right yeah i don't know what <laughs> It's something like that. Something like that. It was all the people um, trying to trying to prove themselves as gods by building this massive oh yeah um, this massive tower, right? Yes. And then of course, God smote them down. Oh yeah. Smote and down the tower. Yes. And that I I, I like that kind of uh, mm -hmm. message. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the next one kind of is very similar. It's a statue of Zeus found somewhere in Greece, and it was it was built it was commissioned by the like current ruler and it, it was because he saw that their neighbors had been building some statues and they mm. were getting pretty big and they had no statues to compare with it yeah and zeus was obviously like the most high god in the greek tradition so that's why it was of him mm. and so they built the statue of zeus he commissioned a local sculptor to do it and it was made of wood which is like why would a sculpture be made of wood i feel like it's not really common in history or like common in any statues that we know well a lot of the greek um amphitheaters were actually wooden really yeah that we that we didn't know about especially um sorry i mean that's not common knowledge because already we're, we always see them as gray and super long lasting made mm -hmm. of stone but a lot of them were wood and maybe just had stone adornments or sto stone yeah. toppings or um, in the later hellenistic uh, theatrical period i think they were made of stone Okay. And that's where yeah. my ancient theater class comes to an end. Yeah. The, the knowledge I've gained from that. But yeah, yeah, just I know you weren't talking about that, but yeah, I think we um the images that we see of buildings from ancient times is like, wow, everything's so stone and impressive. It's like yeah. well that's what has survived. Yeah. But for the most part it probably wasn't like that. Yeah, and this was even it was covered in ivory and gold oh, plating. Well, there you and go. precious jewels and yeah. you know, all that all that stuff. So it was it's really cool. It was built out of wood and like covered with stones and plating and it was apparently always covered in olive oil Ooh, yeah to which him, is just like, to give a machine yeah i guess it was to help preserve whatever material it was made of the wood it was actually the ivory that it was preserving okay yes so it was covered in olive oil and then like around the statue of zeus was this little it was like all black tiles and like a pond hmm. full of oil to make him look double the height so like his reflection in ah. it make it look taller and it was built in another temple, but it was built, like, in there. And people were always, like, writing in their poems and stuff about it. Um, that's how we know, like, so many details about it, is because before it was destroyed, one, a poet, recorded it in, like, really extreme detail. Mm -hmm. And so he also said if Zeus was to stand up in the tower, then he would take the roof off of the Of course, because he was, what, he was seated? Yeah, he was seated. He was about 40 feet high. Wow. Yeah. And... It reminds me of that. Who's the... Um, who's the Lincoln. American person? Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Yeah, it's very a very similar look. I wonder if that was deliberate. Probably. Another cool thing I found about this sculpture was that he was wearing a cape. 
and the cape was made of glass. I wish I had a glass cape. Yeah, because it's like, again, when you picture sculptures or you always statues. picture them in statues in stone. So, yeah, glass, wood, ivory, gold. I thought that was really neat. It's probably why it's one of the wonders. Yim. Um, Yim. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this same as the ta- Temple of Artemis. This one was destroyed before that. So the Temple of Artemis was destroyed in like 360 BC. <clears throat> this one, no, this was like similar time period, but after it was in 410 BC that it was kind of dismantled again due to the Roman Empire saying we need to shut these temples down. Yeah. But this one, it was just shut down. And then there's no accounts of exactly when it was removed, but there's some people after it was like shut down as a place of worship. They, there's poems and things about people going and like touching it and experiencing it. And one other cool thing was that the sculptor who was commissioned to sculpt it, well, two things. One, he apparently carved this guy who was in the Olympics that he really admired, okay. carved him into Zeus's pinky. What? <laughs> yeah. Was this a is this a myth or was it true? I don't know. Okay, I it, hope it it's was a bit true. of a myth. I don't know. So he, apparently, there's this wrestler that he like really admired, who was in the Olympics, right. and he was like, "This needs this guy needs to be immortalized." Mm-hmm. So he carved him into his pinky. Then apparently, like in a lot of the ornate like detailing around his throne there's like another little image of this guy that sounds like a modern day conspiracy yeah so that was really funny and then also the sculptor reported as soon as he finished he prayed to the gods to say like do you approve of this likeness Mm -hmm. and they approved and they there was a bolt of lightning that came and struck the floor of the temple but there was always a glass (laughs) glass or not a glass a gold jug over that spot so we don't know if it was actually oh, to hit cover or the hole? Was, yeah, to cover the hole. Wow. <laughs> or to cover the non-existent hole. We don't know. Yeah. But it's just funny. And apparently even in like modern day renderings of the statue, there's always like the gold pot there. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. No, that statue sounds awesome. I liked that kind of Greek humility when you're talking about the um, the sculptor. And after he finished, he prayed to the gods to for their um, approval. Mm-hmm. It's basically cultural difference between then and now they were they were saying the most we can do is sculpt we're not to be the one sculpted yeah basically i think that's cool except obviously the emperors with their extreme egos yes, <laughs> yes. who thought they were, themselves were divine which is not so dissimilar today um the last one i have is, is the white house of alexandria which was which was built by ptolemy the second um circa 260 to 247 bc and it was estimated around 100 meters high which it's is really very high. high it's yeah. three times the statue of liberty and, well. the, and the classes of roads it's what it today it would be in egypt um the tip okay. of egypt on the mediterranean and it was again damaged by earthquakes 956 to 1300s it was damaged by earthquakes again and again successive ones and then the last of its ruins was used to build other stuff on the site. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just a really impressive White House. It had a really um, big range. Um, and it was needed because apparently around this area, which was, I, I believe it was called Pharos, the town or the um, city where it was, the coastal area, there were a lot of what were called wreckers, which were people who would raid shipwrecks or try and cause shipwrecks so they could oh. raid, raid the boats. Okay. Um, so this lighthouse, that's one of the reasons why it was built. And it was also, after it was built and while it stood, it was a huge kind of strategic landmark. Any kind of conflicts around there, they're like, we need mm-hmm. to take the lighthouse, we need to take Pharos. Oh, I see. Yeah, I thought this was really interesting because it's the most practical wonder. Yeah, for sure. Right? The other ones, I mean, I guess a temple, you could say, is practical. But yeah, um, the other ones are all more decorative, let's say. Yeah, like tombs and temples. Yeah, this one, its size Statues. and its uh, grandeur, let's say, was to its benefit. Yeah. For its practical, uh, for pra- pragmatically. Yeah, I just think I think that's incredible that they had a lighthouse. Like, I, I just assumed lighthouses were pretty modern. True. Yeah. This, I mean, this is probably one of the oldest ones. Yeah. So the seventh wonder of the world is the Great Pyramid of Giza, yep. which is also known as the Great Pyramid of... Kifu. Okay. Who was who the pyramid was built for as a tomb. Right. It's made out of limestone and granite and it's 
the biggest pyramid of all, which kind of makes sense why they chose it as the one to highlight in the Seven Wonders. Yeah, the biggest Egyptian pyramid. Biggest Egyptian pyramid, yes. And it's the oldest out of all of the Seven Wonders, as we've been kind of mentioning throughout. Mm -hmm. It is the only one that still stands, and I think it's just probably, in my opinion, seems like it's the most impressive. That if well, it's I was the most iconic, most iconic piece yeah. of human architecture ever. Yes. So we have no idea how it was built. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we watched the conspiracy ones and it... I love watching documentaries yeah. about the pyramids yeah. or just the Egyptian uh, technology in general. It just doesn't make any sense. And like how they're all like laid out to match the stars. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to me. And the biggest point of discussion, I thought, for this pair, the pyramids were that they were like they were built just to kind of point away from ourselves to connect the people like with something higher than them mm -hmm. which things aren't really done today i don't think or aren't built to do today no not such of such huge scale mm -hmm. yeah because like i feel like even if you're building a church today they're not usually that elaborate well because they don't have such a huge labor force yes, there's also planning well. and permits and things that go into today unfortunately yes do we think aliens helped build the pyramids? <laughs> but no, when I was looking into the Egyptian technologies, they were, they were like um, perfect circles, like drilled into things and they had metal and just some of the, some of the laser etching and all that stuff, or what appears to be laser etching and things like that. It just seems impossible. So yeah. do you think alien technologies helped build the pyramids? <laughs> yes or no? I'll say no. Ugh, it's so boring. <laughs> I don't know though how they were like it's crazy to me yeah they well, were built I, they were I, built 2500 bc yeah i know when i when so i look at like... it when i if you look at it like the accepted reason for how the or um, explanation for how they built is a lot of labor force yeah and pulleys and ropes and ramps i'm like ramps are not going to help you with a like huge incredibly heavy like three ton block of stone because it's not only getting it from getting it onto the pyramid, but they had to get it off the mountain or the um, the quarry or the yeah. ditch where they excavated it from in the first yeah, place. Yeah, and cut them into perfect blocks. Yeah, I mean that. But can you know be that done. makes sense. So it's like the amount of labor force yeah. that went into this. If it wasn't be, aliens, there'd be millions. Is incredible. Yeah, but the world population at the time <laughs> it wasn't that high. Well, they had a lot of slaves. Honestly, well, we like... were watching that video about the wonders today, and it said yeah. it's unsure about whether the pyramids were built with um, slave labor or just with highly skilled workers. I was like, highly, how are highly skilled workers going to drag the stone across um, the desert, yes. up and down mountains, if they weren't slaves? It was built with slave labor. Yes. But <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So that's the seventh <laughs> wonder of the world. Yeah, and there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of theories as to what exactly the pyramids were for and why they were built yeah, with like such... Yeah, like they were built to harbor energy. Yeah, why they were built with such specificity. Mm -hmm. um, their placements, you know, mapping the um, Orion's belt and constellations mm -hmm. and things like that and the um, the movement of stars. I just yeah. find that all fascinating, that kind of cosmology and astrology that the Egyptians were into and a lot of ancient cultures. Yes. Yeah, were they built to generate electricity? And like, in my head, I thought that's crazy, no... But also, like, nowadays, probably the most... If someone was going to put that much effort into something, it would be to find a new form of energy. Well, yeah, yeah, we were, yeah. We were yeah. saying that because the, a lot of the more impressive um, architectural undertakings, which we see today, are on a big new Hoover Dam or a huge yeah. um, solar complex or a wind farm or something mm -hmm. like that. But, it, I mean, that would if there was ever proof that that, that was what the, the pyramids were for, mm -hmm. I think that would be one of the biggest news developments yeah. ever in the modern world for us to realize that like, oh, the Egyptians are using electricity? That's so crazy. Yeah. Anyway, the reason they say that could happen is because it's something to do with the tunnels underneath a lot of the periods, uh, sorry, the pyramids yeah. um, and, the and the salt water underneath. Mm -hmm. Something like that with the chemicals. Yeah. It sounded very far-fetched when I was listening about it. Yeah. But you never know. I've heard theories that, um, or conspiracies that, the acoustics inside the pyramids were used for like sound healing to heal sick people. Yeah. A lot of wild stuff like this. It's just which so crazy. Kind of borders fiction and yeah. um, history. 
they're really the most like mystical out of all of the wonders. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because well, like, the other ones, we know exactly what they were for. Yeah, it's also Even because... Even if it's fake, we know what it was for. There's yeah, like concrete it's also stories. Because, that's, yeah, because they were the oldest. And yeah. we know the least about human, uh, Egyptian civilization compared mm-hmm. to Greek and Roman and yeah. Persian. Very cool. So are those your favorite of the seven? You have to pick, I a, think pick a favorite. I have to pick a favorite. I'm going to pick the pyramids because... I'm going to say the hanging gardens. They just because real. No, I think that's crazy that there is... Like, why would... I would never think, oh, one of the seven wonders of the world might have not been real. Like, that's just crazy to me. True. And I think they're really, a really cool image. If you look up, like, any renderings of the Hanging Gardens, it's like, I want to build this. Yeah. It would just be a gorgeous tiered garden. <laughs> like. Yeah. So moving on, are we going to get into our modern wonders? Yeah, so Aaron, what's, what's the modern wonders of the world? Um, well, when we were trying to come up with this <laughs> list earlier, you were saying things. I was listening to some things. You listening like, to things, the Golden Gate and I was going like, nah. Because really, there's only one thing. One thing, which is a wonder, and it's more of an anti-wonder, and I call that the internet, <laughs> because um, it's from. I mean, I'm, I, I recognize I'm not everyone, but for me, it's the thing that stops us from having a concrete list of seven wonders um, today, as there were back, as there was back in one BC. Yes. And it stops us from really having a lot of wonder for anything. Exactly. It's the anti-wonder. Because if someone came to you and they were like, I went today and I saw this massive pyramid and it was so big. And if you'd either say, I already saw this on Instagram, on your Instagram story. Oh, 300 feet tall? That's not too big. There's other, like, I don't know. I feel like being able to see the exact specifications of anything you want, pictures of anything you want, seeing things real time, it's just yeah. like, it kind of destroys. Well, the world's, the world's so... Um so open Mm -hmm. you can just find anything you want visit it online a thousand times and then when you go there are you going to love it as much of course not no um these the reason these seven things were so esteemed was because almost everyone hadn't seen them Mm -hmm. and i wonder if there was anyone who'd seen all seven i bet there weren't many people probably not and despite the world being so small Mm -hmm. and now the world's so i mean we know like we were at the um mayan ruins in Mexico. Yes. And that was incredible. That was... That was a, yeah. probably the most wondrous things I've ever seen. Yeah. And you said you were very looking forward to seeing Buckingham Palace in England as well. Yeah, but the thing that's different about those and the Mayan ruins that we saw were that I've seen pictures of Buckingham Palace like... Yeah, the Mayan ruins were, were kind of a surprise to us they because were we're surprised. so culturally and, culturally and I guess a, uh, uh, geographically ignorant. Yes. Basically, yeah. But yeah, and we didn't even know we were going there. We just like hopped on a bus and they were like, yeah, we're just going for a drive. Yeah. And then we showed up and it's like, what? what like these? there's pyramids. Like yeah. it was so crazy. But then... Got to walk on them. Yeah. We were just... Running crying. up and down them. <laughs> we really shouldn't be really... But it, that's what... They're just open because they're everywhere. Like yeah. the ones we saw weren't even like the most famous ones. They were just off in like little sub areas. Mm. Like, oh yeah, these are just in the woods. Yeah. It was so crazy to me. But um, Buckingham Palace, when we went to England, I was like, so excited to see it. Same with Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ben was just unfortunate. Yeah. So we were just walking. It's like, oh, there's Buckingham Palace. And it's like, what? This gray cube. Because <laughs> yeah, like, it's pretty. Like There's a gold, like, I found the fountain the most impressive part. But in my head, the way I imagined Buckingham Palace was like really gorgeous gardens and like really ornate. And like I'd seen it, but like... When I saw it in real life, it was of less course. exciting. If, if we'd just I, gone there the first time and you'd never even heard of it, it'd be yeah, way I'd more be like, impressed. Yeah, like, whoa, like a palace. Yeah. But I went and I was like, what? This just looks like the parliament building. That's one of the reasons I don't... I try to stay away from any kind of imagery or in-depth knowledge about New York. Yeah. Because that's, like, the dream place where I want to live. Yes. Um, and I want to retain a sense of wonder for the Empire State, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Um, the bridges and mm-hmm. just the streets in general and the history of the place. Yeah, just experience it. Yeah, I think if I was kind of drooling over Google Images every other day, and this goes for any place in the world, you're not going to love it so much when you get there. No, because, like, the images are going to be edited, enhanced. Yeah, exactly. Most of the time. So that kind of is just going to ruin any... Yeah, when you see it in person, it's going to be less exciting. Because like, people were describing all these wonders. There's like, oh, there's a statue of Zeus. It's covered in gold and mm-hmm. ivory and precious metals like you have to go see it no matter how elaborate the description is and most of the in-depth specifications written down were probably for archival purposes 
Yeah. And not to say to your parents, wow, the statue of Zeus was this tall and it had this kind of diameter. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like you were saying, that person writing a poem in the temple about the statue. Yeah, he didn't say it's 40 feet tall. He said if he stood up, he would take the roof off of the temple. I love that. I love that. I think that's really neat. Sometimes it is also very cool. You get the sense when the people are really proud of their um, accomplishments that they write down all the sizes of everything. Yeah. Reading the Old Testament, there's so many chapters which are just describing the uh, construction of the tabernacle. Yeah. It's like this part of it was this many cubits and this part was this uh, material and this part was this material and this part was this many cubits and it's just (laughs) on and on and on. Um, and I didn't realize before I read it that so much of the Bible, this, this large chunk of it was just, um, just facts. construction <laughs> measurements. Yeah. Did you get to the Noah's Ark yet? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's in Genesis. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. A that's, long time a, ago. that's a lot of facts. Yeah. No, the tabernacle was more though. Yeah. But I mean, I appreciate that more because it wasn't about, it was a tabernacle for their God. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about anything else. Yeah. We don't have many, I mean, first first and foremost, we don't have many gods in yes. society anymore. And secondly, we aren't building many... Like altars or temples. M- many yeah. altars to them. Yeah. Not saying like explicitly religious gods. The Statue of Liberty works too, just ideals that stand mm-hmm. for something. Yeah, no one's out there like, oh, I'm going to spend millions, maybe billions, on building this structure to kind of hold <laughs> yeah. up. Well, when you put it like that, actually, it sounds kind of crazy because such a person could be building something more useful or more practical let's say more practical like maybe a lighthouse of alexandria no no not a (laughs) lighthouse although we're going to see that we're seeing the lighthouse today we are going to watch the lighthouse yeah exciting anyway what else if you were to build a wonder Mm -hmm. today with no budgetary limit yeah what would it be I think it would be a really elaborate electricity facility yes yeah it'd be like yes. this just alternative energy complex yes and like one thing was that i was always <laughs> thinking why don't we just put a bunch of um like wind turbines there, like uh solar panels in one place and it's like if something happened to it the whole world would be screwed but it would be it would be a complex of right alternative energies very heavily fortified um <laughs> But it would be like also a museum. People could come and learn about energy and be like, oh, this is why we need... It would be need. so loud because of all the wind turbines. Yes, it would be great. But what I would do is dress up all the wind turbines so they look like famous... Oh, another thing is um, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I kind of want to go there. I think that looks really cool. Yeah, I feel like that would be one place that would be very underwhelmed. Really? Because apparently you get there and they're really far off. In the yeah, distance. well, yeah, you have to look through those little things. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think it's a really cool idea because yeah. it's such an ancient-seeming concept... Mm-hmm. But it's so recent. Yeah. And I mean, we were talking about building statues to human pride. Yeah. But those were, I think, built all when the four founders were dead already. Yeah, I think so. And it was more about what those people st- stood for. You know, mm-hmm. Honest Abe, Ben Franklin, and Ingenuity. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if those two people were on it. I was just, I don't really know. Really not up with American culture no. or history. Um, but yeah, it was more about what those people represent. Yes, for sure. Because some of the presidents are very like iconic for just their work and not necessarily their lives. Because some of yes. them were not great people, but they did good things. Yes. Yes. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was how like things can be ruined for you by the internet. was like movies. Mm-hmm. When you go to the theater, you know exactly what's playing. You've seen the trailers and everything. I feel like we've mentioned this before, but I feel like it's a very similar concept to this. Mm-hmm. It's like there's no, not even going to the movies is something that can fill you with wonder anymore. But yeah, well, that's the thing. People could say, well, you know, we're griping about the modern world, but it's not just post-internet. There was also a lot of information shared in the 80s, 90s, 70s, 60s, 50s mm-hmm. via television and movies and newspaper, yeah. which is true. But it was, we can't pretend it wasn't an absolutely exponential leap with the internet about how much we can know about everything all the time mm-hmm. ahead of time. Yeah, like, you had to wait for the newspaper. Now, if something happens, you know. And it was limited to how much the newspaper could hold yeah, on so its pieces of paper. Yeah, so you had to kind of discern what's important to share to people. But yeah. now it's like people, something might be unessential or even damaging, but it's still going to be shared. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. another thing I was saying is that in Greek times, the this is kind of off topic, but the um, 
the stories of the gods and the misadventures um, in a lot of different um, cultures actually the Greek gods the Roman gods the Egyptian gods the Norse gods the Celtic gods there's a lot of there's so many stories about them interacting it's almost like a soap opera you know their battles yeah. their fights their love lives all those things and the people were re very um, knowledgeable about, about those and yeah. very um, interested and one could make the comparison between that and what kind of grips people today long-standing or long-lasting um, serialized soap operas such mm -hmm. as blockbuster superhero movies yeah. or Star Wars or whatever it may be and we could say that well from both sources we are learning you know they're ultimately supposed to be teaching us lessons yeah morals but yeah they're supposed to be kind of fables mm -hmm. but I just found it that doesn't satisfy me because those stories from those cultures about their gods were all the, the ones that were kind of immortalized were all um, organic they all just came from experience people kind of from the cultural sharing yeah. and you know possibly if you believe in those gods from the gods themselves mm -hmm. whereas today it's just accepted that our stories all come from corporations yeah and filtered down to us yeah and that just seems that just seems less planned. authentic to me yeah these huge um committee made um stories which yeah, are like made been made to make money really grouped. yeah they've been people they've control been asked, tested yeah. yeah so it's very interesting how like yeah our fables have been like kind of chosen for us they haven't just come about and they're all corporate they're all designed to make as much money as possible yeah and i like some of those movies too yeah. but it's just the, the significance that these things have in culture are incredible yeah and they're building disney world and they've and disney world's another one we could say that's a modern wonder but it yeah. was made by a corporation to make money as yeah. much as i like it and it seems cool mm -hmm. i don't want to go there someday yeah um yeah any other modern wonders that we like disney world is definitely one that came to mind because it's a very similar celebration of the stories that we were raised on just like a lot of these places kind of were like the statue of zeus yeah you could compare that to cinderella's castle in a way mm-hmm um, I kind of like talking more about the ancient wonders, especially the ones that are destroyed, because it's yeah. like, well, I'll never get to see those, so I can talk about it. Yeah. The modern ones, I felt, I also really didn't want to go over any modern lists or, or lists of nature. You know, there's the seven natural wonders and things like that, because ultimately I'd be talking about things which I've never seen. Yeah, exactly. I've only seen through Google, whereas for the ancient wonders, that's, except for the pyramids, that's the only way anyone can see them, so we yeah, might as well. That's fair. Yeah. That's really, yeah. It's true. So I wouldn't want to be talking about the Great Wall of China and be like, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> Oh, I love the Great Wall. I've seen it all the been. time on Google. Yeah. Images. That's one place I'd like to go. That's one place? Yeah. One you got place. the Colosseum, the Parthenon. Yeah. That's Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. The thing with the internet, another thing about the internet, is if someone, like, shares a picture of them at the at the pyramids then your mind can't like discern that you weren't there oh yeah i always found that interesting and like i'm tried really hard to be really conscious of it because i catch myself thinking i've done things or not like consciously thinking i've done of things course but not, it's just but like you you are um being exposed to things which yeah. in antiquity or any time any other time in human history we would not have been exposed to no like i think like sometimes i'm like oh yeah i've done that like I feel more successful than I am mm. just from reading books even but not even reading books it's more like watching online videos of people okay doing their things and I think people just need to be really careful about that not to get preachy but it's just like of course not not even just be careful what you're intaking because you might start to lose your sense of wonder or your passion or your drive yeah also another modern wonder just completely ignoring <laughs> that um Tesla builds those huge um, solar yeah it's in something like that uh, factories mm -hmm. which are very impressive yeah which generate an outrageous amount of electricity yeah there is something very awe-inspiring about uh, modern technology yeah at scale like that like the grid the grid <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's crazy um, modern wonder w I think we can sound on the podcast a lot like we're really really romanticizing classical times and mm -hmm. um uh, we're being anti-technology and anti-growth and all those things. Yeah. But we love 
technology. We think it's awesome. Yeah. We mentioned the internet as an anti-wonder, but we were also in complete recognition that it's incredible source of information. Wikipedia is awesome. The fact yeah. that we have these huge um, vestibules of information and imagery and uh, content sharing, and we're uploading a podcast, which we have never been able to do in the past. Yeah. We're completely aware of that. It's just um, the negative effects that it has as well. Yeah, and people just haven't been taught or have been... Maybe yeah, we're, yeah we're in a, we're in a yeah. uh, learning period. Yeah. But I just feel like a lot of people don't consider it like that. No, it's just like, well, it's, an, it's just a new technology. You just adopt it. They adopted the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people compare modern technology. <laughs> They're like, well, the hammer was once a technology, so it was the wheel, and they just adopted it. There were no repercussions. The internet's bigger than that. Yeah. It's more pervasive. It is. It has a lot of psychological impacts, which we don't even know yet. So I just think these kinds of discussions, talking about the internet maybe in a negative way, just kind of bring up things. We balance that, it. We balance yeah. it out because everyone else is so pro-internet. Yeah. Um, we're talking about the whole purpose of this episode is people in ancient times when the world was so small and there was a lot more mystery um, had more wonder than us. Yeah. And it's kind of shallow seeming when people make modern lists, which are like, this is what's most wondrous because a lot of us are more cynical than wondrous. Yes. What are some ways which we can go about restoring wonder? I was thinking about that. I watched a movie the other day called Behold the Earth and it was like a Christian movie about how, environmental movie, about how like people have lost their wonder basically and based in what the kind of essence of that whole film was that we need to have a more childlike perception of things. Mm-hmm. So we need to like connect with our inner child and try not to uh, extract the child out of people that are still children. Of course. Similar to Catcher in the Rye, we want to be Catchers in the Rye. But how do we get there? How do we do this? I think just kind of being really conscious of the things you consume, like the media you consume, yeah, is a good first step. And I'd say get outside and like experience it. But try and surprise yourself. Yeah, try and surprise yourself. Try and get yourself. out of your comfort zone. And also, for me anyway, my first instinct, my first reaction to most things is often the cynical one. Mm -hmm. Try and stop yourself. Yeah. Even just don't say it. (laughs) Yeah. Let's say if you don't have anything wondrous to say, don't Don't say it. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know if that's good (laughs) advice. Don't say it. To be honest, I don't know the answer to this. No, neither do I. But I think try and catch yourself. Try and appreciate the small things more, maybe. This is just a discussion for ourselves, but just like... Don't just see something for its face value, like look deeper into it. It's also something about living in the moment and not planning your trip to Hawaii six months in advance. Yeah. But I mean, that's the culture. That's the lifestyle. You can't blame people for doing that because they need to know when to take time off. Mm -hmm. Like practical things like that. It's difficult. Yeah. We need to to create a culture that allows for more spontaneity. Yeah. And degrowth. (laughs) Yeah. A little bit. A little bit of degrowth. So we were just we were watching videos today about we we're trying to decide where to move someday, and it's about the temples in Japan. And there was like people asking questions about like their vacations to Japan, and they said, "Well, all the temples start to look the same after a while." And I, like in my head, I'm like, "How can they all start to look the same?" Then it said, "Like unless you have a more like precise eye for the details." And I feel like just trying to always try and train your precise eye for the details. Yes, that's true. That's what I was trying to get at. That's why like modern art. I think modern art will do that for you. Yeah. So you can look at two pictures that are all just red paint, but just look at the just, details. Yeah, look at the details. Experience the aura. Yes. Yeah. So, those are our seven wonders of the world in our discussion. Mm-hmm. Ancient wonders. Ancient wonders. The Colossus of Rhodes, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the White House of Alexandria. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis, the Statue of Zeus, and the Pyramid of Giza. Where can they find us, Aaron? We're on Instagram at the underscore environmental, where we post nifty science videos, nifty um, reviews of our own content, basically. Yeah, references some inspira- to other arts. Yeah. yeah, references to other arts or some inspiration, which varies across medium and, and across time and culture. Uh, some nature photos and just some general message to get off of Instagram. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. You can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts. Yep, you already know that if you're listening with new episodes every Monday. 
Uh, we'll be back next week with a really cool scientific episode about wind turbines, which I guess comes right off the back of uh, talk of wonders of the world because wind technology is wondrous. It is. Have a great day. <laughs>